Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm really happy to be featuring the brand Zodiac. Now Zodiac is a Swiss brand that so many people have never heard of and it is such a real shame. They have been going since the late 1800s and were making dive watches back in the 50s with their Seawolf model and yet still so many people have never heard of them. They use in-house movements and their prices are incredibly good. Um, what I mean by good, this model you see in front of you here, the C Super Seawolf 53, has an in-house movement, um, 200 meters of water resistant and looks for part, Swiss made with history and comes in at less than 930 pounds. Now really, what else do you want? It really is an incredibly well-priced watch. Now, before I get too far into a review, I've got to say a real big thank you to Ryan over at Francis and Get Francis and Gay of Coventry, as they have now become a Zodiac dealer. And so you will be seeing more of these because I really like this brand. So if you're in the Midlands, you want to pop in and see a big collection of Zodiac watches, they've got them. If you can't make it to the dealership, then give them a call and I dare say I'll get my watch out to you ASAP. So, sizes wise, we're talking it's a 40mm case on this model, 13.5mm thick, a lug to lug size of just under 49, around about 48.7, 48.8ish, and a strap size of 20mm. So, I think it's a really good size watch, this one. Now, let's zoom in on that dial and have a closer look. The dial is rather cool. We have this amazing, amazing texture work going on there. It does look rather nice. We have applied our markers going around here, and then we have the inner section here, which is full of loom. And it's the strangest loom I've ever seen. It's actually an orange, which matches the text of the Super Sea Wolf and the orange tip of their second hand. Their hands this is kind of Zodiac's signature. They always have this kind of style of hands, which I think looks rather cool. We also have a date window at the three o'clock position there, which is framed in the same kind of style as we have the hour marker oppo oppo opposing sorry, there, and we have a black background on there. Now, as you can see, we have a very nice sweep of the second hand because this is a proper eight beats per second movement. So we have a really good um, glide to it. The actual movement in this watch is an in-house movement. It's unfortunate because you can't see it on this, but it is a STP1 slash 11. Now that is in essence a clone of a 2824. I did put this on the time grapher to give it, yeah, see how it would look. And it came in, I think, at a very impressive, around about three and a half, four seconds a day, which to be fair, is within chronometer specifications, which is actually very, very good. Now, whereas the the model it's cloning, the 2824, has 38 hours of power reserve, this model actually has 44 hours of power reserve. So an extra six hours, which is always a good thing. Now, if you haven't heard of STP, they've been developing this movement now for over 10 years, or well, around about 10 years, say, so they're a Swiss brand. They are technically in-house because they're owned by the same group. So, you know, it is a very reputable um, movement, even if you haven't heard of it before. Now, as we come out from the dial there, we have a nice dome crystal with AR coating, which every so often you can see like a slight purple bluey haze, uh, that uh, blue haze, which is the AR coating. Now, the bezel insert is this kind of, pressed or stamped kind of insert with a nice big loom tip at the top there. This after all does have 200 meters of water resistance to it. So we do need the loom tip um, on the top there. Now it is pressed, you can feel it, but it's not sharp. So it's got a nice feel to it, no problem at all. The actual bezel, you can get decent purchase on it. So you have a nice coin edge bezel there. Now let's actually hear what it sounds like. Very nice, nice and light. Tiny bit of black back play, but not much. That's pretty good. Now, does it line up? Because after all, watches around this price point, I'm not mentioning names, but are known for not lining up. But this one does perfectly, so I'm pretty impressed with that. Now, the case design. It is nice and simple, but well executed. 
looks like we have, you can see a little bit of brushwork going on underneath the DLC coating and a little bit um, opposing direction there. But overall, it's a nice finish. No problem at all there. As we come round, we have a signed screw down crown there. And on the back, um, we just have a solid case back, but very well done. Little bit of texture on the inner on the um, on this section here, and we have the Zodiac crosshair logo, which is also good. As you can see down the bottom here, it does actually say 1882, which was when they first started. So as we come out from that, we have this. Um, I think it's like a vulcanized rubber strap. Now this is the one part which actually isn't made in Italy, but, uh, sorry, in Switzerland, as it is made in Italy, sorry, I should say. We do have a nice um, Zodiac on the keeper, even the actual um, pin and collar, uh, sorry, not pin and collar, the actual clasp or the buckle, I should say, uh, got there in the end, is DLC coated with their logo on there. Now this is one thing I do like, it does have a wide, big kind of, um, section there i do prefer that when it comes to um actual straps i'm not so keen on the very thin type now as you can see logo air slash cut kind of cool actually so let's actually put this on my wrist so you can see how it looks now as you can see bob over there is wearing another um zodiac there which i'm really excited to review that's a chronometer spec one um Let's just put this on my wrist. Now my wrist size is seven and a quarter inches. And you can see just how nicely that kind of sits there. I think, you know, I'm not just saying this for the price, but overall it is a really nice watch. Um, I think that it really does work well, and especially for that price. I think for the price here, um, for under 930 pounds, getting a Swiss movement, a Swiss watch, with Swiss movement, with over 100 years of history, I think it's a heck of a lot of watch for the money. So that's just my take anyway. And also they do so many other um, watches right down to, I believe, as low as six or seven hundred pounds. And obviously you can go higher than that. But overall, I think they are just amazing um, value for watch, yeah, value for money watches out. Yeah, they really are a good price watch. What do you guys think? Is this a is this a brand you would um, go for? I think, especially this model being at this price, is really quite impressive. Anyway, I'm going to leave you to it, and all the best, and most importantly, stay safe out there, guys. Okay, then, take care. Till the next review. Bye.